Hello and welcome to this video. I'm Marcus Hayes and some of you guys that follow me on Facebook and Instagram may have noticed on my stories that recently my dad went missing. Now my dad has been slowly losing his memory for realistically definitely the last couple of years. He has mainly been in denial about it which is understandable but you know more recently it is getting worse and my mum has been saying that it's getting to the point where she feels she can't cope. Now obviously most of the time I just go and visit my dad once a month or once every couple of weeks and you know I notice that he's telling us the same stories over and over again. Things like if he goes out in the kitchen and makes me a cup of tea he'll come in three times and ask who wants sugar and whatnot. So you know it's definitely been something I've noticed but it's not something that I've allowed to get in the way of me and him enjoying when I go and visit my parents. Now recently my mum went over to Thailand to visit my older brother. She's actually over there now. She's over there for a month in total. She's got about two and a bit weeks left and unfortunately the other day my dad from what we can make of it um, from speaking to his neighbours and stuff he went out at 11am. He normally goes out and gets the papers and stuff and um, yeah, basically we ended up catching up with him at two in the morning and he ended up going to the area where we used to live. Now, recently we noticed that his phone, he had a really old phone, um, the volume was quite low in his ear when he's trying to talk on it. So I sort of ordered the same phone as he's got off of eBay. You can't get his phone brand new anymore, but I thought I'd get the same phone. And then, you know, I got it sent straight to his house and I said to him, you know, when it comes, just swap the SIM card into your phone and you know you can use your old charger and everything and I actually spoke to him on the phone when the phone had been delivered and said to him again you know try and change the SIM card over and he said you know he should be able to and I didn't hear from him and then it was a couple of days after that that I tried to ring him and you know it didn't ring and I thought you know he's obviously struggled changing over the SIM card but this was the day before Father's Day so I was going up there on Father's Day anyway, so I thought nothing of it. But my little brother went round to his house that day and he sort of messaged me and said, have you heard from dad today? Because when he went round there, my dad wasn't in. He's got his own key to my parents' place, my little brother. Um, he noticed that the day before's papers were in the recycling, but there was no sign of that day's papers. And he just assumed that my dad had gone shopping, left him a note. He did sort of pass through the local supermarkets just to see if he could sort of meet up with him there. Didn't see him, thought nothing of it and um, went home, but then, you know, asked me if I'd heard from him. I decided to race up to Northampton, you know, expecting him to be in and, you know, there being no issue. But then when we got there, he wasn't in, his car wasn't there. And then that's when we knocked on the neighbor's door and she said that he'd left at 11 a.m. And by this time, by the time we went up there, it was sort of, you know, seven. In hindsight, I think it was, a stupid idea to leave my dad on his own once my mum had gone to Thailand but you know I didn't think it was that bad yet you know these things do progressively get worse but he seemed like it was just him losing his memory a little bit you know he didn't seem like he'd got that bad anyway we decided to ring the police you know I kind of assumed that they wouldn't take it seriously I've I haven't had much good experience with the police, to be honest. But when I mentioned that, you know, he was losing his memory and stuff and, you know, they said no, you know, file a missing persons report. So that's what we did. And then, you know, I'm getting asked all these mad questions like, you know, has he ever been involved in firearms? Has he ever been involved in gangs? You know, these things, they just have to ask you everything, you know. And, you know, they ask questions like, has he ever mentioned about suicide or self-harm? And, you know... If someone's asking me a question, oh, I want to give them as much information as possible. I don't want to leave anything out. Now, my dad's got a very dark sense of humour. You know, it's one of the great things about him. And he had sort of said to me when I spoke to him last, oh, I'm thinking about burning this place down, like meaning his house. Um, but then we sort of, you know, I sort of brushed it off and we moved on to another line of conversation. And, you know, with my dad, he sort of says mad things, um, which are a joke to him. You know what I mean? Um but, you know, when someone says to you, has he mentioned anything about self-harming or suicide, I decided to, you know, let this guy know who I was talking to, you know, the police on the phone, that that's what he said. So anyway, you know, he's asking me all these questions and he was saying to me, look, you know, they're now, you know, investigating as we speak, you know, he's, he's typing into a computer or whatever and apparently there's police officers like investigating it while we're still talking on the phone. Um, now, 
when I sort of phoned up at first, thinking that, you know, it wasn't serious enough or hadn't been long enough, say, to do a missing persons thing, I just thought, look, I know the reg of his car off by heart and maybe it'd be really simple for them to, you know, type the reg into a database and, you know, it would tell me if he's been pulled by the police or if he's had an accident or anything like that. But the guy said, yeah, you know, that is possible and, you know, it's being investigated as we speak. But then all of a sudden he sort of said, oh, I've just thought of something can you hold the line? And I was like, yeah, I can hold the line, no problem. And at that point, because the neighbour had sort of said that she would text us if my dad came back, we sort of thought, right, we don't need to wait at my dad's place. We can start looking around at the local shops or or whatever, um, where he lives in Northampton. But, you know, we literally got round the corner and then the guy come back on the phone and said, right, uh, a sergeant's going to come to the address, wait there, they're going to be there like as, as soon as they can. And I was like, so what, does that mean you know something? Does that mean that you found something? And the words he said were, yeah, this is not information that I can give over the phone. The sergeant will come and see you. So then obviously, like, you know, I'm not one to unnecessarily worry. I understand how my mind can, you know, make up unnecessarily negative stories and stuff. So, you know, I'm sort of trying not to expect the worst, you know, just taking it as it comes, you know, focusing on waiting until the sergeant comes and then, but also, you know, focusing on preparing myself for the worst. But the sergeant, you know, didn't come. Part of me's thinking, you know, they found him, he's dead. Um, but, you know, part of me's thinking that if it was that serious, the sergeant wouldn't take this long. You know, he was, it was, it was an hour and a half, you know, by this time, my little brother had come back round because he had a key to my parents. So we were in my parents' place and, um, yeah, um, eventually, you know, like an hour and a half, an hour and 40 minutes later, I think it was, we got a phone call basically saying that my dad's car had been spotted on the AMPR cameras in the area that we used to live. So that was it. We decided to rush down there, you know, just decided to start hunting around. So, you know, it's a good hour or more to travel back to that area. And then me and brother sort of made a plan, you know, you look around this area, which was where he'd been spotted on the camera. And then I went and looked in the actual area where we used to live. Um, and yeah, we just kept driving around in circles, driving around in circles. And then, you know, while we were driving around, like I rung up this number of the police officer that uh, rung me to tell me that he'd been spotted in, in that area and said, you know, has there been another hit? And he basically explained to me that there was a hit at like 6 p.m., again at 8 p.m. Um, at this particular place. And my brother decided to wait there just in case he came back past that area again because it was like he was circling. And then at 10 p.m., the guy told me that, you know, he'd been spotted sort of here, 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 and then that place again. So we had a sort of like route that he'd taken. And yeah, so we're just frantically driving around. You know, it's like a needle in a haystack. Like it was pretty pointless us driving around, to be honest. But I remember feeling that whenever we sort of stopped um, and, you know, sort of met up, me and my brother and you know started making plans like where we're going to search next or whatever I started feeling anxious really anxious you know it reminded me of when you'd been on a coke session and you'd run out you know like really like you know your stomach like sort of screwing up and you know we were panicking like we were panicking um you know I kept ringing the the police officer again to say you know has there been any more hits and stuff and I didn't want to keep nagging them because they've got other stuff to do but yeah he was like I'm afraid not you know and we, we were searching for probably six hours and you know it got to the point where we were like well hopefully he's found his way home but according to the ampr you know it hasn't like surely he wouldn't get all the way from you know just outside west london to northampton without hitting another ampr camera so we're sort of thinking you know is the system not as good as it makes out and he has got home without it you know triggering or is he literally in the same area that we've been searching for six hours you know by this time it's obviously dark it's late um you know, there was mad stuff going through my mind, you know, obviously starting to think that I've let my dad down, that, you know, yeah, like, it, it was mad, but I just felt better keep driving around, even though it was basically, you know, worthless. Anyway, we come to a conclusion where, you know, I mean, my little brother's got kids and stuff, and like, um, he just, and he kind of lives nearer-ish to my dad's place, and, you know, we kind of needed to know has he got home? Like, you know, is, is the AMPR not that great? And he has managed to get home. So my brother decided to go back to my dad's place. Um, I think he was going to stay there until the morning. And then, you know, we just carried on driving around the area, like where, where we used to live. And then randomly, we got a call from a police officer to say that he had my dad. A member of the public had actually seen him. 
um, and he was very confused and they basically they could see that he was confused um, he gave an address where he used to live like when he was a kid you know bearing in mind my dad's like 77 years old um, so they sort of took his car keys off him he wasn't in trouble he you know he, he, he had behaved himself and stuff and yet yeah, at that point we was literally just around the corner because he was in that area you know the ampr system was correct he hadn't left that area so you know we obviously went there and um you know thanked the police officer. the police officers were absolute legends you know as i say i've had bad experiences with the police and i'm sorry to say that as far as i'm concerned the majority of them are scum like you know they're all sort of people that have probably been bullied at school too much um yeah that's just my opinion you know whether i'm right or wrong but that's just my experience but these two were absolutely sound like luckily so you know they said don't let my dad drive my girlfriend was with me she's insured to drive any car i'm insured to drive her car so yeah we decided to take my dad back to to our house and yeah he's basically been living with us for the last few days he's actually gone with my brother today and he's going to be going out with my brother and my brother's kids his grandkids tomorrow to a farm and stuff which will be cool for him gives me a break i need to crack on with making videos on my cars and stuff you know i need to keep my income coming in because um Otherwise, I'll have to go and get myself a normal job and I won't be around to sort of look after my dad anyway. Moving forward, I'm, you know, I'm taking one day at a time, but moving forward, you know, my mum will be coming back from Thailand in a couple of weeks and then we have to really sit down and have a talk um, of how we're going to move forward because, you know, my mum has been struggling with my dad. My dad is clearly getting worse. I think it was made a lot worse because of, you know, my mum not being there. You know, all of a sudden it's, it's very different. But in my opinion, it's not bad enough yet to just throw him in a care home. You know what I mean? And I'm happy to do whatever I can, you know, there's limits, you know, but to, to take care of him. You know, my situation, I'm lucky to have such a supportive girlfriend, but I live in my girlfriend's house, you know. This isn't my house, I don't own it. I pay my way, um, but, you know, it's my girlfriend's house. And, you know, if it wasn't for her being so supportive, then there'd be no question of you know me being able to have my dad staying there we do have a spare room which i've had to tidy up a bit because uh it was just housing my records and my merchandise um for the other channel but yeah right now we're just going to take it as it comes and as i say when my mum comes back from thailand we have to have a serious talk we have to have a serious talk in terms of how my mum's gonna um deal with my dad because what i've found is you know he keeps asking the same questions yeah i'll just keep answering them I, I don't I, i'm not going to get fed up with it i'm not going to get frustrated i'll just keep answering them like he's my dad it's not his fault like that he's losing his memory and you know it's going to get worse like so while it's not any worse than it is i want to make the most of that you know so you know it's a pleasure and an honor to you know, care for him uh, as much as i can you know but you know we need to sort of explain to my mum look you know it is going to get frustrating but you need to just not get frustrated you need to just repeatedly answer his questions like without getting frustrated um i don't think it's going to be safe for him to drive anymore obviously recently he's only ever gone out driving with my mum when they go shopping but she has said that a couple of times it's taken him hours and hours and hours to get back from somewhere that is only an hour away just because he's sort of you know losing it with the directions and he won't listen to her so that's something we're gonna to have to address as well but um you know what it is what it is you know part of me if i allow myself to is thinking maybe if i wasn't such a loser in my life maybe i'd be in a better position now better financial position now where i could be in a house that's bigger and we'd be able to take both my parents in but that's all you know my mind if i allow it to um comparing my reality with a situation that isn't my reality so you know this whole thing has kind of enforced a lot of the things that i talk about on this channel a lot of the things that I now live my life by, you know, the ideas that I live my life by, you know, living in the present moment, you know, taking one day at a time, that is even more important now with my dad in this condition. You know, this whole building myself up to be able to take on any situation, you know, that it's another example of that. If I was still being a waste man, drug user, like I'd be no good now, would I, to my dad? You know, this is gonna mean that I've got less time to do things like make videos or or whatever. So it's gonna force me to be a bit better with my time. You know, this evening, my dad isn't here. And my girlfriend's actually doing night shift as well. And I've already started shooting a video for my Patreon, you know, uh, a car video. And I'm now sitting down to shoot this video to share with you my experience with this whole situation. And tomorrow, because my dad's gonna be with my brother, I need to, you know, definitely pull my finger out and 
get myself around the garage to do something or other on the cars so that I've got some more footage to create a video from. You know, this situation, if I allowed it to, would be hell. You know, I'll be thinking, what if, what if? I'll be thinking about the future, you know, where my dad gets worse and worse and worse, when my dad forgets who I am. And no one would blame me, really, for going down that path and getting all depressed about this situation. You know, it is going to be hard. It is hard now. It's going to get worse. You know, I could, you know, start taking drugs again, you know, as a way to suppress the, the feelings of this situation. But ultimately, that's not going to improve anything, is it? What I'd be better off doing is continuing on the path of keeping myself as healthy as I can, mentally and physically, continue on a path of turning myself into a better human being, and then I'm gonna be in a better position to deal with this situation and any other situation that arises in the future. This isn't easy, but life's not supposed to be easy, especially for a man, and that's what I believe now, and that's how I live my life now. Following the posts on my story about my dad going missing, I actually had people that were willing to drive from miles away to come and help me search, but I knew that it was pointless us even driving around searching, so obviously I politely declined. But you know, I've had so many people contact me and tell me their experiences with their family members who have had, you know, dementia or Alzheimer's. So um, yeah, if any of you guys are watching, massive, massive thanks. You know, it does help when other people share their stories of what they're going through in the same way that it's helped me massively when you guys have got in touch to tell me your battles with drink and drugs and mental health and that sort of thing. And look, if anyone else is going through what I'm going through or what I'm going to be going through because it is going to get a whole lot worse, I'm no expert, but already in the couple of days that I've been, you know, tackling this head on and, you know, actually focusing on my dad's condition rather than just brushing it aside it's just another example where you know building yourself up to be the strongest person you can be is so beneficial you know when it comes to things that are going to happen to you in life you know not only are you going to be able to deal with things better yourself but you're also going to be a better person and more of a help to your loved one um, or whoever else is going through hard things around you we can all sit there and focus on the negatives and wonder, you know, why me, why me? Or, you know, focus on how unfair life is. But that's not going to do any good, especially in a situation like this where it's going to get worse. You know, time is your enemy in a way, you know, so you ain't got time to focus on how negative it is or how unfair it is. Every second you waste on doing that is a second you could be spending with your loved one who's going through this, you know. So look, if any of you are going through a similar thing as I am, feel free to put it in the comments or get in touch with me through the usual channels. But um, yeah, I just wanted to come on here and explain the situation and explain how I'm dealing with it at the moment. It is still very early and um, yeah, maybe I'll keep you updated with the situation as it goes on. But for now, I want to thank you all for watching and I'll chat to you soon.